uh, good morning everybody uh, uh, this is part of our uh, interactive sessions with uh, professionals uh, in the different fields which is related to architecture uh, and the allied uh, disciplines uh, uh, during this uh, whole session i request all the participants to have their uh, audio and video uh, on off if you have some questions you can always uh, put it up in the chat message Uh, which will be taken up uh, by the moderator dr kirti and then she will just uh, uh, put it out so the format of the session would be the first uh, uh, part of the session would uh, uh, after after uh, the introduction of the speaker by dr kirti uh, the speaker would uh, uh, give her a speech uh, following which we will have a small video which is played uh, uh, showcasing the works that have been done by the students of chennai school of architecture uh after that we will have a small uh, uh, question and answer session maybe 10 minutes or 15 minutes uh, which is depends on how it goes so the students and other participants uh, uh, we we would have uh, architects and uh, you know, parents from different uh, uh, uh thank you sir for the opportunity uh, in fact uh, we've been planning to hold the session with uh, ms deeksha gelot for a long uh, time now and uh, the reason why we planned this session is because in india when we talk about uh, the trends of communication uh, for us it might seem very much limited to maybe the types and maybe the theories of communication that we generally discuss in class but when we talk about the 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 current generation uh, that also aims at uh, uh, securing jobs abroad uh, we need to give them a platform where they can learn from uh people with first hand experience and where they can also uh, uh take take this thing into consideration that yes a communication within your uh, country within your native is definitely very much different from communication at a global level and uh, when uh, i discussed it with ms deeksha she was uh, you know she appreciated this this idea that yes students must be given an opportunity to learn ideas from various other uh, department members abroad and i to know about it mass communication from the very prestigious jamia and uh, as well as her masters is also from jamia and now she is there at the uh, uh, department of gender studies college of arts and humanities uh, university of dublin ireland and uh, i think uh, my association with with deeksha was uh, let me say that uh, at a professional level it was only for one and a half years but then uh, we connect very well when it comes to you know sharing of academic research and uh, you know ideas that can be that can be culminated into research work so without much ado i again welcome deeksha for uh, sparing some time for our students i am hopeful that my students are going to benefit from your uh, first hand experience and i am also thankful to uh, uh, mr vedinathan for and uh, professor lubnathan for organizing this this uh, webinar and uh, over to you viksha thank you so much ma'am uh, thank you so much sir for having me here so uh, instead of getting making the you know the seminar a little too formal i'll keep uh, things uh, somewhat informal and to start off communication is something that for i think all of us it's though, though it comes naturally to us but no matter what field we are in when it comes to interaction with um, the outside agency it is more it is quite a challenge now when we talk about uh, so i'm uh, i'm well aware that all of all the students here are you know well equipped with uh, what communication studies is what are verbal and non verbal uh, forms of communication so uh, in this particular field of architecture the students are uh, as and when you go out in the field you uh, your field is heavily heavily based on non verbal communication as well as verbal communication but for you uh, as students primarily 
uh, the idea that you need to not just you know have a strong base in communication but you need to you know over the period of time keep uh, you know changing it keep evolving it especially to the surroundings around you that's very important so the very first thing uh, that i would like to talk about is as architect students what what is what it means to uh, you know have a communication skill set so uh, as most of you do engage uh, in your practice with the, you know it's not just the drawings it's not just the uh, the sketches that you made it's the designs that you made uh, you interact through the these are all forms of non verbal communication and you majorly interact uh, through or via these medium and uh, i think all of your field work then comes down to you concentrating on how you share your idea or how you basically get the dialogue going between yourself and the client or the you know whoever you are communicating with so um here it's not just important to have a good base in english but to be able to communicate your idea freely in a very clear and concise manner is very important um you know it's uh, i believe most of you are um, you know undergrads and uh, just you know starting out this i think first second year students as you progress over the years you realize that it isn't uh, just the you know um, need of the r to build up on the communication skill but if there is a lack of communication between you and the person you're dealing with maybe it's your client maybe it's the firm that you're working with maybe it's the you know firm that you're interning or could just be your own practice right you need to have that gap uh, you know decreased of communication and that is not again very you know it's a uh, emphasis on the fact that it is not just good english you could have a mediocre english but have wonderful wonderful communication skills all um you know all it depends is how you're able to convey your idea or your understanding of the idea or whatever your plan the plans that you've made or anything to the other person now uh, specifically in you know i can talk about uh, the challenges that a lot of students face when they move to say um, a foreign country especially the european sector so here english uh, it's it's taken for granted that you do understand uh, all the english all the accents more so uh, there's a level of um, in, there's a difference in level of intellect uh, when i say that i do not mean that you know the section is superior or not what i mean to say is there's a lot of thing that they take for granted the students who are coming in for their masters from no matter which country they are coming in they are fluent in and at the same time if you are getting into research or if you're getting into design they expect a level of your understanding of um not just a uh, theory part but also uh, on site as in your understanding of the place that you are the surrounding that you are which you know a lot of students do not get a hang of mm, i think other than this there are some other points for students specifically who are you know not just coming in or planning to you know um, come to the europe especially the europe sector because of as a uh, so mentioned that it is uh, so rich in the architecture that all of you have already studied in is that uh, here there is a, there's a very different um, how do i say it in term of the communication interpersonal or intrapersonal communication here there is a wider gap as in uh, the students are expected to um, so one there is a increased level of information the student and your professors or your thesis guide or whoever you're dealing with and uh, same if you go into any of your um, you know architectural firms to work part time or full time jobs there is this level 
which we Indians see as informal for them, that is the level of, of being, you know, pseudo formal. Wherein uh, what we have always discussed as intrapersonal communication and interpersonal and then public over here, uh, the degree gets basically decreased over a period of time. Now, uh, other than this, uh, what else I can talk about? So, uh, as so the be the main idea of this seminar was to focus on the uh, contemporary trends that are coming in to in uh, you know communication and to focus all of these specifically to your field. Now, I have just a vague idea of what your field entail, but to the best of my knowledge, I'm going to try and uh, you know to see what I can help you with. Now, um, oh, so right, a few points that I think would help you if anybody is looking to uh, say apply anywhere after your bachelor's or maybe just trying to pick up uh, any job once you finish uh, your bachelor's. Uh, one of the you know contemporary tools that uh, communication has evolved into is the whole idea of networking. So. Uh, as students, this is the perfect time for you to engage into building up your network because, you know, communication is nothing. It's, it, it's no more just uh, communicating between two people, communicating to, say, a, you know, a bunch of people in a room. It is now have evolved, especially in, you know, now that the pandemic, uh, as you can see with the lockdown, a lot of things are online. So here is the time for you here is the chance for you where communication is about networking it is how you socialize and influence people you take in ideas you uh, explore explore the you know the boundaries of where your ideas can take you and you notice this that a lot of professors uh, everybody is available online uh, online right now and they're willing to provide you with all the guidance that you need everything um, so if you have, say, a topic that you are interested in and you try and approach anybody who is, say, a master in that field or who has done some substantial work, communication is your way to getting in touch with them. It's basically your key, you know, weapon or tool, however you want to say it, of getting in touch with them, uh, presenting what your idea on this, you know, particular topic is, and then taking feedback, building up, and that will, you know, definitely reflect on um, whatever um, project, whatever, uh, especially your portfolio that you're building up at this point of time. Uh, then another thing, uh, how currently, you know, in this scenario specifically talking about communication has changed. A lot of this now is just virtual communication as uh, you know, a lot of you as students or, you know, as young professional, there are times that it's, it's, for example, right now, even for me, the fact that I cannot interact with you uh, physically becomes like a very hard thing to communicate because I really don't uh, know uh, when we are communicating or when we are having a discussion or say a lecture or anything of that sort a lot of what you say, a lot of what, how you say, and the direction in which you want to proceed depends on the reaction of the room. And in the present situation with a very big lack of that, it becomes, it, it kind of acts like a hindrance. So this is something that is going to get very normal for, I think, everybody. And one of the major, you know, key here is to, be able to try and express however you want to of what your idea is and you guys i mean especially because uh, you are seeing it first handedly you can actually build up your skill of virtual communication wherein you get used to talking to a screen presenting you know uh, where you in uh, wherein you uh, upload short videos of not just interviews but also uh, the whole idea of portfolio up till now when you're applying for higher studies had been that you send in your work. But over a period of time, there has been this changing trend here specifically, wherein with your portfolio or with the works that you've done over the past four, 
uh, to five years and they ask you to set a short video describing your work going through you know all of your achievements and everything like a short cover uh, page but here in it's the video so this is one of the new trends that's coming up one of the new you know um, idea that's come up or the way it has evolved right now uh, right sorry so this is one of the ways that communication has evolved and it is for you to be very beneficial right now to build up your skill of you know virtual communication now the next thing i would want to talk about is um in terms of you know when or how you're applying your you know application or i'm sure a lot of you have people to help you guide through it and if you're planning for application whichever way you want to go now here in when you are uh, when you've decided this is the particular country or this is the region that you want to move in do remember or do you know take into account that people interact in a very different way than how they do back home you have the added advantage of sharing a you know geography wherein a lot of references that you use or a lot of the local jargons that you use work because people get people are from the same demographics and they do understand what you are trying to say or what is it that you know you are uh, trying to represent here in everything comes down to basic all the words or all the jargons or all the lingo that is specific to indian subcontinent does not apply here and a lot of time uh, like personally for me i see the students around take it for granted oh this is something that must be universal but it's not you need to remember though india is producing a lot of academic uh, based work and research and uh, you know different work in other fields a lot of the west is still ignorant or is still uh, lacks a very uh, you know detailed study of what is it that is happening in your field in your subcontinent so uh, the idea is that you increase the world view and one of the tools to do that is again as i mentioned it's not just networking uh, you network you build up on your existing skills you take in as much information as you can to you know uh, evolve your work to suit the needs of whichever region or whatever you're aiming at uh one of the you know key uh, uh, how do i say it? one of the key factors that comes in in communication is the different ways in which uh, miscommunication can take place uh i don't really have that you know in that big an insight in your field so i'm just going to use a few examples from what how i Right. into their into their design into their plan and this is with a specific reference to the lgbt community so right. like uh, as she mentioned that in ireland there are certain spaces which are uh, uh, lgbtq friendly yeah, and all lgbtq friendly and uh, let us let us have a discussion that how uh, such things have come across to you as a, as a as a as a common person and how right. these things are uh, you know starkly different from what we see in indian context okay right. can we have a discussion on that also? uh so very briefly the masters that i'm doing over here is based on research uh, in the field of gender sexuality and culture so my foray here is specifically lgbtq and queer fictions and everything queer so uh, for one of my papers wherein i was looking at structure of this you know public space and how it is how does that gel or how does that include lgbtq society um as kriti ma'am just mentioned that was one of the papers that i was discussing with her so um if you ever look at because i'm based in ireland right now if you ever look at the tourism that uh, you know basically ireland has um, circulated it is considered to be very um, lgbtq friendly place and though 
I think in reality, a place in all, you know, its entirety wouldn't, isn't necessarily that inclusive. But yes, to a, you know, huge degree, uh, this country, uh, to be honest, it's a very, very small country, the size of, you know, one of our states. But even as a state, uh, if you look at compare it to any state in India, the country is more LGBTQ friendly, more inclusive in its spaces. And some of the ways in which they've done for, uh, that is not just to have, you know, specific area or sections that, oh, this is just for LGBTQ people or this is just for the poor individuals. But within the everyday space of your um, hmm, uh, everyday public space they have included them so one of the example i think that comes to mind again and again is how a lot of theaters and a lot of um you know halls here the public halls the public uh debate halls and everywhere you find gender neutral washrooms now that's something though it's very you know i'm pretty sure not a lot of people do think about it but the very space that a public washroom or a public, you know, toilet in India, one that is, there's a huge lack of public, uh, you know, washrooms, but over here, it's not just that they're available, but they are including people who don't even confined to gender binaries. Now I do understand that this is possible only with a population that is just, uh, you know, the size of one of the states in uh, India. However, at the same time, we have some very, uh, there's a whole section. So if you ever take a look at the uh, map of Ireland, now Dublin is situated towards their east coast. In the east coast, uh, Dublin city centre, uh, as any city centre in any of the you know cities, they have included that, they have made that space, the very uh, public, very accessible space to be LGBTQ friendly. That, as I mentioned, one example being the public uh, gender neutral washrooms. The second would then be, uh, we have designated space for only core population, wherein the core, uh, and though it is not, you know, banned for straight people or the straight places are banned for the uh, LGBTQ, but here, the idea is that the queer community needs to have a space of their own, a space that, you know, goes with their definition of how it caters to them. Uh, one of the things that I was discussing with, with Dr. Kriti was how in queer community, the structure of home is very different from what it is in a heterosexual community. Uh, I'm not going to go too much into that. But there are some examples, for example, uh, there are some examples across Europe, wherein there are communities, there are sections uh, of the city, of the space that is particularly queer uh, friendly or queer inclusive. Now, um, there is, uh, it's similar to having uh, in India, I think. So for example, you have this particular street only for shopping, right? And you would have this particular area which only uh, deals with one section. And I'm not going to say this is same as your housing design, wherein uh, this is a section of you know um, people who live in this. Uh, sorry, the certain people who live in this section of the city. But uh, herein, it's the public space. It is not the private that they have taken into being inclusive because what a private space defined for each individual is very different and I think it'll be very hard to chart that out but to have uh, the public space for example your malls and your you know shopping center something like that now that you are designing in a way wherein you do take an account that it's not just the heterosexual uh, community but also the queer community that comes in uh, there's a firm in London who specialize only and only in core architecture. You guys can look it up. Uh, now, the whole idea of having these, uh, you know, public spaces, there are in Europe, like for example, in Spain, there is a certain section. When I say section, it's more like um, 
maybe you could think of it similar to a ghetto so that is only and only about poor architecture it is about um everything that you can relate to lgbtq plus um so similarly as uh, ma'am had mentioned that you were talking about how you know uh, design takes in um uh, is so inclusive and dignity and all i think uh, one of the ways here it is see uh, countries here have reached to the point where they can talk about lgbtq and they can uh, you know be all inclusive whereas i think one of the challenges that india is facing right now is being inclusive of at least the basic sections all the sections of society because class and caste is something that exists uh, i think you know that's a huge uh, there's a huge existence in india which is not the case here the class yes um so if you look at say dublin's map there's a complete stark uh, you know distinction between north and the south so yeah there's a class distinction as well but uh, class uh caste sorry here does not exist so a lot of challenges uh, which india you know faces does uh, other european country especially does not face now um i do have a few you know friends here who are researching on how space uh, can be used to redefine what the uh, slums are or what informal settlements are so that could be one interesting thing you could look at and yeah so see these ideas though if you look at it uh, in- inclusivity is something i believe you have already been very much familiar with which section of the society you make um, the inclusiveness for that depend from country to country that depend from geographical context from one to another so in india it may be the poor people the people who are living on the streets the homeless over here it is you know a step further it is about the lgbtq community and how they are being included in the uh, public space in the visible space because uh, it's not about as the i think the topic is uh, highlighted the idea of dignity here it is not about if you inclu- see when you include somebody in a public space you making them visible when you make something visible it's very easy to you know uh, take out uh, or very easy to highlight what is wrong with the system so the moment you include somebody or some section of the society of anybody in the public sphere you are actually inviting them to be visible right i think that addresses it uh, i don't know if doctor yeah. yeah uh so i think we have uh, discussed about how uh, how how architecture and design also communicate in in a manner for a casteless and a classless uh, environment yes for a casteless and a classless uh, society especially when we are talking about the the infrastructure when we are talking about the facilities that that are open to everyone and how the public spaces could be redefined right yeah. so when we are talking about the, the 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 quick definition of the contemporary trends in in communication and how the change is happening it's not a it's not a it's not a thing that will that will happen overnight but when we True. talk about that how design and architecture could be axial points for identity and dignity restoration i think ms diksha has made a valid point when we are uh, you know when when we see the difference between the indian and the irish context more so i would also request uh, diksha ma'am to highlight that how students of architecture can can follow the contemporary trends not just with the restoration of identity and dignity but also how because when we are living in a in a in a global pandemic state how architecture and design students can also contribute as uh, as the as the veterans for maybe new design maybe new architecture and at the end of the day maybe veterans for new communication why because when we are living in a society when we are living in a in an apartment we see that every you know and it's a it's a uh, famous logo of a 
of a paint advertisement if i'm not wrong and i i give uh, examples from the advertisement world every, every now and then so we we see that every house has something to say so what right. is what is the space that you create as a as a student of design and architecture so what is that space going to communicate why because here when we are talking about communication for design and architecture students we don't intend to say that they communicate through words words yes but then the context and meaning also changes from one place to another so when sure. we are when we are designing a particular setup how the student of architecture can communicate through maybe the map that he or she is creating maybe through the design that is contemporary maybe through maybe through the plinth that they have designed for uh, for a particular segment or for, for a particular uh, section of the society so so can we just highlight a few points on how in the global pandemic stage how uh, the communication could be established via media architecture and design because here we are dealing with uh the non verbal communication i believe that uh, architecture and design is uh, you know these are uh, one area these are the areas where we see a lot of non verbal communication coming up can you please highlight on that right uh, so as ma mentioned now um, it's very evident that your field particularly uh, the idea of non verbal here is not just through you know gestures words however but it is about how you design what you design now um you you see at a very beginner's level you are given with a prop set of problems and then you have to design you have to propose a design around it however when you as students as you progress over the years you'll realize that what your field holds is one of the major tool on how to redefine everything so it's not just the problems you are addressing so uh, maybe the locality that you live in or say the college that you study or the area that you're from uh it's not that um, you know um, you can only look at the you know identify the problems that these these area have and then work to design them better but you hold the tool to redefine what it means right um what it means to say as i mentioned uh dignity and just 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 one second i think yeah okay so um i'm so sorry uh redefining what a space could mean what i mean by that is a particular um the physical space that you are creating you could you have the tools to reimagine a space now when i say reimagine i'm not just saying restoration or reconstruction i'm talking about re, you know designing from the very scratch as you know you go into design or say further on into planning whichever you uh, you feel you guys plan to take what is important is to see that architecture and design is one of that very few fields wherein you have uh, you know the means to physically sorry not just theoretically but actually physically transform a space how does that work from you know i'm just saying this from my understanding of what i've seen uh, of the field around me a lot of say a lot of areas here Uh, are being proposed to have new cities coming up cluster towns and all of these cluster cities coming up now when that happens you are reclaiming a land that basically has nothing no facilities and now you're providing this stage where you are designing to provide you know, the basic necessities or you know your basic plan should have um, xyz things xyz facilities all of those that is where you make sure that you are including every social um structure or every social uh, every section of the social structure of the city of the place of the country what do you would if you were to say uh, so there that is the stage wherein you are redefining how a very physical space is interacting with different sections of the society how you know people um are 
when they're going to interact with the cities. Uh, I'll give you an example. So around India, a lot of new cities are coming up, right? You will see, I mean, from a Delhi context, it was this new coming up of NCR region, where in Gurgaon or the Gurugram now, there were this, you know, past of um, small clusters wherein it was just high rises and it was a lot of um, uh, housing and uh, there was just a uh, space for corporate head offices. Now, when that happened, it displaced a lot of poor population from that area. If it were for you, so this is, and this is something that is now the new thing. The new thing isn't just to design uh, huge corporate offices or, you know, really high rise building. No more do you need, uh, you know, huge structures uh, as in the old architect, uh, architecture practices. But here you are problem solving. You have now become a, a means through which the problem solving takes place how that happens now um, as in the example of say the places around Delhi when there was this burst of uh, people coming in coming for jobs and you know a lot of companies uh, investing to put up their head offices and the call centers their uh, offices and all what we saw was a displacement complete displacement for the people who were living there uh, a lot of them you know the land was uh, you know uh, the companies bought the land, they got rich, but they had to find other place to live. And comparatively to move to Delhi or to move to, you know, a, a city that has already been established for a long time, it is expensive. Now, here in US designers, here in US planners come in. You, if you were given the task of redefining this place, how is it that you incorporate all the sections how do you make the space available for each and every person? It's the same as uh, when you look at the playground, right? Uh, a public park. A public park would have a walking path for, say, the elderly. Then you will have a swing set or something, playground for the kids. So it is incorporating every section who you think will use this particular space. Similarly, right now in contemporary times, you see... Uh, the one of the you know one of the main tools that you guys have is redesigning all the spaces wherein you take in uh, the different sections of the society and you address the problem of each and every uh, the section in order to you know make a design that uh, does not just fulfill the time of that need, but actually over the period of time adapts to the changing society, adapt to the changing social structure and, you know, stands uh, across the time. So, yeah, I think that is one how architecture and design is very crucial at this point, of time, especially in pandemic. Now that uh, if you look around because of the pandemic, because of the lockdown, the whole country have changed the way that it works. The whole world is changing. The whole idea of the earlier, the idea of, you know, putting everything in a small space, utilizing uh, most of the space is changing. We need more, uh, we need more distance. Now here is the time when uh, there is like complete boom, especially I can see it around here, wherein they're getting in planners, they're getting in designers on how to now redefine the city, how to the same space that they had, which earlier could accommodate a lot of people right now needs to be restricted. And one of the examples is, so um, over here, they have stopped all vehicular traffic in the main city area on weekends. And uh, on other days, they have put a restriction that, you know this is the outer limit after that you cannot enter it is something very similar to if you have you guys have been to pondicherry after 6 p.m in the evening there is no traffic no vehicular traffic on the beach road and that stays till six in the morning so that's how they because of the increase in vehicles because of increase in people coming in late at night that's how Pondicherry redefined it. They put a restriction that now there's only going to be like a foot traffic. Similarly, now in the cities like Dublin and all, they are redefining, reimagining what this space can, you know, especially now with the changing times of pandemic, how can the same space uh, cater to this uh, new, you know, reality that we know of?
I think. All right. Uh, so I think, uh, I so. Uh, yeah. So I think uh, I, I must agree with uh, Ms. Diksha that yes, uh, she's she is familiar with the with the geography around, and then she she reiterated the fact that yes, when we're talking about the Pondicherry uh, traffic rules, these are very much similar to now what we are facing during the pandemic times. Uh, yeah, I think uh, by following the protocol now, we would play a short video uh, yes. in which we will see the departmental activities, and uh, yeah, we would do uh, the moderator, sir. What we can uh, do is we can play the video now. Yes, uh, we'll do that. Uh, Simi, can you just play the video uh, showcasing the work? Uh, this is a collection of videos, a collection of works that were done by students in the last uh, one, one year. Uh, this is a quick video, not the professional one, but just uh, uh, made to the students themselves. Just waiting for. Uh, the thing to be played.
thank you cv uh, thanks for uh, playing the video for us Uh, uh, these works that you saw on them is uh, made by our students and, and uh, we take them through a series of uh, uh, different medium. So they, they basically unlearn what they have learned in their uh, schooling. So right. it's been more of physics and chemistry and maths and all this. So just to get out this creativity out of them, we kind of uh, try to uh, help them unlearn what they've learned. And then, uh, like you said, uh, you know, all the spaces, you know, they start from the basics now again. We, we start right. looking at everything from the, they start observing things. You know, they start seeing, they look at a leaf for maybe one hour. Uh, you know, they just keep looking at it and then they observe and they get, come up with so many concepts with this one. Uh, right. So this is one of the things. Uh, ma'am, um, Kirti ma'am, if uh, we can go ahead with the uh, question answer session that some uh, students have yes, got. One thing that you are saying, ma'am, uh, regarding uh, the languages and the lingo in different areas, yeah. that applies very much to architecture as well. Uh, yeah, exactly. What we say here is different in uh, uh, Karnataka and it's different in uh, Maharashtra and Kashmir and everywhere different. Uh, I remember we have working with one uh, contractor from um, uh, Turkey, uh, right. the, the contractor from Turkey in Azerbaijan, the, the place called Baku. So the Turkish contractor does not understand English or uh, any other language. He, he knows only, or he knows only Turkish or Russian. Uh, right. So and I know only English. So what was common between us was only the drawing. Yeah, so exactly. He, he would understand drawing. I would. So we would just. It will be like olden days. Not just write something in the calculator and show to them when we go for shopping. So I would draw something, and he would he would basically understand what I've drawn whatever material that I'm saying. So we would just communicate through this, this thing. And uh, as the globalization increases, uh, I think we have to have, a, a, you know, as you said, we have to go back to the basic. Can't take away all the lingos. We just go, yeah. go back to the basics and start communicating. One good thing that you actually said, uh, which, which made a lot of sense. Sir, I would request the students to please uh, write their questions in the chat box. Yes. So that the resources person can address those questions. I think they're all typing it very slowly. Yes. Uh, meanwhile, I have a question. Uh, yes. yes, sir. Uh, so when we are talking about uh, creating new design, creating new types of uh, communication via architecture and design, how do you think that we can amalgamate uh, the Western design thinking or and the Eastern, and that is the Indian as well as the West? Now, it is very difficult, as you said, that uh, when we are trying to uh, motivate students uh, who come from uh, the Indian subcontinent. Uh, they find it very difficult to adjust because the whole context and meaning of communication is very different. The jargon that we use in India it is not acceptable, and uh, they they also uh, try to try to put the idea down that uh, uh, whatever whatever uh, localized communication we we have tried to develop. It is. It is not in. It doesn't follow any line, and in line of communication as for the Western context. So, how would you think that we can amalgamate the Indian as well as the Western uh, context of communication, especially from the point of view of design and architecture? Um, th th this one is like. Uh, 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 we're just going on one cycle. Uh, basically, what we do is like uh, uh, we started off with what we know uh, from our Indian context, uh, and uh, slowly we start uh, we started following the Western uh, ideas and concepts. Uh, for one of the examples can be the glass buildings. Uh, glass buildings are generally not suited for Indian uh, climate because it absorbs heat and it's very uh, 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 no, it, it holds off heat and then. Uh, but whereas for the Western countries, you need the heat inside the building. We use heaters there. So instead of using the heat, they use glass to actually 
uh, get in the field. Uh, we started following them and then uh, now we have uh, realized that what we did was a mistake and then going back to the old system where, where we had corridors. Uh, if you see old uh, colonial buildings, they had a lot of corridors. Uh, our Indian, uh, no, the traditional architecture houses had a lot of courtyards in the house. So it, it would actually basically give you a, you know, a lot of ventilation and heat dissipation would happen. So we go back to our norms of uh, uh, staying back uh, in our Indian uh, uh, traditional manner and then we, we create a hybrid of both. So wherever was required, you uh, know, we, we kind of, for the for the aesthetical purpose we use glass or for the maintenance purpose we use glass and then uh, areas which require uh, more ventilation we use our traditional methods of uh, screening. So I think this is a, a process that is happening uh, continuously wherein uh, we start with what we know and then we uh, see what other people have done we copy that then we learn from you know, the, the mistakes and advantages then we again you know, create a new system i think that is also happening in architecture uh, and it is uh, we are all expecting how it will happen uh, during this online thing and uh, you know, this, uh, corona thing uh, uh, as uh, you know, the speaker said uh, Initially, we wanted to cram the, uh, the more lot of items into a single space, so we call it efficiency. Now, uh, for example, in a classroom, we design a classroom assuming that 40 students are going to sit in this space. Now, we need uh, uh, 40 students to sit in a space where 80 students will be sitting. So, we need a bigger classroom. So, the uh, the lighting is going to change, the air conditioning requirement is going to change, the cost of building is going to change. Uh, it's a new thing for all of us, and I think we're all learning. Uh, uh, by the way, yeah. so that's something. I think it's, it's a cyclic process that, that's happening. Uh, that's that's one thing that is. Uh, then uh, one more uh, that uh, I would like to ask uh, the speaker is: uh, you you talked about this uh, video covers uh, that's happening. We are also going to introduce. Uh, you know, uh, we are having online admission process which is happening with. Uh, uh, no, the interview that we are doing for the students, the prospective yeah. students, is all online nowadays. And uh, one of this, uh, you no know, proposal that we also have is to give a one-minute time where students send their uh, cover. Uh, so we basically kind of uh, with a lot, lot of number of uh, uh, application that we have, we'll be able to shortlist based on this video. Uh, is there a format in which you uh, you look at it like you no? Know, how do how do they make that into one minute? How do, what should they highlight in that one minute time? So usually uh, over here, what I've seen specifically is whenever you're applying, like a lot of students also work part-time jobs uh, and millions of applications, but what they, how they have filtered it down to posting, as you mentioned, one minute video. And this is exactly like a cover letter, wherein um, you, whatever you were going to mention in the cover letter, uh, your, you know, uh, any academic um, achievements or uh, why specifically addressing why is it for example in your field it's architecture that you want to do and what is your understanding or how do you think it's going to help you or build you up so that because in one minute I think uh, you will have a lot of students who have you know achieved great uh, academic uh, heights but for them what what is it that the mean architecture is because uh, sometimes we come across students who are you know not really clear and they just want to have a clearer idea but they just want to explore the field i think uh, this uh, video concept could help uh, one them being honest about exactly what is it that they're expecting out of this course and what is it what is the knowledge base that they have while going in I think both of this can be addressed in that one minute video and I think that'll be really helpful for them as well uh, and for assessors who want to go through and see you know who fits in and who doesn't yeah, uh, okay. so, yeah okay. actually it happens that there, there are some students who would come and come and join architecture not knowing what architecture is yeah, if exactly. they don't know this five years it's a five year course and this five years is going to be this you know one, one, one bad right to, to take it if yeah, they like I, it, it's like it's, it's like one beautiful. dream come true for them. I remember when I had finished my uh, school. So I was very sure that I didn't want to do engineering. That was the one thing that I was sure of. But I had given my all I, uh, AIEEE and I did give my NADA twice. Oh. So I had a very clear idea what architecture was, what I was going to do with it. 
for the very fact that it included a lot of uh, hand drawing and that's because i know that is not my best point and that is something for the past say 12 academic years i haven't been able to you know work on so for me there were so many challenges that i knew i would be facing and as a long term goal for me what my goal was and what uh, i knew architecture could give me uh, were not on the same you know they were not aligned so it was only after giving arta that i was like yes i know for a fact that i don't want to do this right i want to go to literature so yeah i i totally get it without yes, the knowledge yes. if you're sitting in because there were so many students around me who were giving the paper just because it's it comes with engineering paper or yes. they were just giving it because uh, it sounded cool yes they had no idea that five years are rough and you're going to unlearn everything you're going to you know just it's it's a whole different thing and it, it's so interesting to learn i mean um, as i mentioned the one paper research paper that i've done here was uh, putting together what i know about architecture and i know about public spaces and then the uh, you know gender identities so yeah i mean it helps it's interesting it keeps evolving and so yeah that's something at this juncture uh, ms diksha and uh, vedina kattan sir i would like to also invite uh, dean sir professor logunathan to share his views about uh, the current scenario and then we can take up uh, two questions from the students good morning uh, ms diksha thank you for uh, being with us uh, on behalf of chitnad school of architecture and our fraternity and our faculty uh i extend our uh, thanks to you uh, for being here with us and spending uh, this valuable time uh okay before you know just uh, continuing you know i want to know uh, you did uh, nata and then what happened next uh, we could have had a wonderful architect in our uh, fraternity <laughs> uh so uh, because i come from a defense background and i was very, i mean for me my first priority was getting into defense services and uh, architecture was not i mean till that time from what i have gathered and everything uh, it wouldn't really i mean investing 5 years into a field that would you know teach me so much ultimately would not help me achieve what i wanted to though i ultimately didn't end up going there uh, but um, i mean as a you know fresh 12 standard student you don't know what you want to do some people say do this it'll be good uh, you know this is a new pool maybe explore that so i gave entrance exam for literally every field that there was including law hotel management and everything and uh, though that's what i'm saying uh, architecture was important for uh, i mean it was interesting for me but maybe not the f- whole five year thing uh, but right now as a literature student as a literature graduate i am taking in different things from the field of architecture so i think that way it's very versatile uh and it can amalgamate with so many different fields and there's so many research that's coming up which is architectural humanities so yeah i think uh, though i never went into it i think i can now make up for it by researching so that sounds uh, very good actually although no you don't end up practicing architecture at least you are supporting how to practice architecture uh, totally. see, uh, i would certainly say that you know when, whenever we go for any communication uh, uh, seminar communication thing there are lots so many things now first of all they say you must listen first like, listening is the first way, uh, good way of uh, communication like that it was all these things now your presentation uh, had been a very very different one and it touched upon very sensitive things uh, you know very clearly when you look into it first thing you said everything has to be clear and concise then uh, again you know you said uh, you spoke uh, to the context like you know with about the virtual communication like normally a speaker can actually do well when he can actually he as he can see the audience and see the re- response and reaction and things like that but now now we are totally uh, blank and talking to some uh, college uh, but uh, but still you now you said how uh, effectively you can actually do that and what is going to be there in the future for uh, people to uh, speak and you also mentioned that about now you increase the world view like in the westerners they are very ignorant about what is happening in india so i think that's a very important point you know uh, all our students and all the architects everybody in the participation now we all take it up in a very perfect sense and then we, we should do about that 
and uh, mentioned about how and what to be present and things like that. Ultimately, uh, we, uh, we like, like you, know, the, you said language is just a tool to communicate. So that way, it's, uh, there's so many information uh, in a nutshell, you've given a, a lot of uh, things you know, to, to, to take away. Uh, one uh, <clears throat> question I just wanted to ask you is, what should not be communicated? Is there anything like that? What, to make a good community. Actually, art is a form of communication. Right. And so does uh, uh, architecture. So that is where you find the difference between architecture and engineering, civil engineering. A right. building designed by architect will communicate and will actually respond, communicate. Whereas now the, the other buildings might even now just to, uh, solve the purpose and uh, be functional. So this is the thing. So. Can you just touch upon or you know, give our students also good insight about uh, what not to be communicated? So Is it anything uh, like that? Or? Although, yeah. you know, there, I, I mean, personally, I don't think there's something as, uh, there is anything that should not be communicated. But uh, as, like, as an individual, if you are going with the aim of communicating, I think it is very important to highlight uh, your, uh, you know, the advantages, skill sets, or anything that is your, um, you know, strong point. Or so, as you mentioned, art and architecture is very different from engineering. Uh, what sometimes happen, and sometimes what I've seen uh, when when people are, you know, uh, communicating through the design, is that what the design is perceived from my, you know, context and your context might be very different. And that is where miscommunication comes into being. So I think uh, when when students are you know communicating, one thing that they should avoid, or one thing they should be very particular to check again, is any area for miscommunication and to then break it down into being simple. I mean, being simple is not bad. Uh, you don't need to ne uh, unnecessary complicate things. So maybe I think that is one to, you know, avoid uh, any area that could be an area of conflict or any context that could be misunderstood or miscommunicated. I think that's just one thing. Other than that, um, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, also, uh, the whole idea of having worldview, uh, you know, goes both ways. There are some students who, uh, you know, who come across who've seen so many, so many things back in India that they don't realize that what was normal there might not be normal here. And uh, the need is to address those rather say, oh, but this has already happened. Oh, but this is not new. You need to, they need to understand that context is very important and to modify uh, anything to uh, suit that context. That is something that at all costs they should include. Okay. So Thank can you. we have uh, yeah. like five minutes for questions? In this? Yes, please. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, first question is how to present ourselves with the people who do not know anything about architecture? It's a million dollar question, I must say. <laughs> when we were studying, uh, no, I, I'll just uh, start, then maybe uh, the speaker can continue. When I finished uh, architecture, I would just go and then some of my cousins or relatives ask me what are you doing. I would say architecture. They would say, what architecture? I would say, uh, architecture. Oh, agriculture. Okay, fine. They're doing BSc agriculture. They would not know what architecture was. Telling people, oh, then if I start saying, no, no, it's about building and we design building, we design city. Oh, engineer. Okay, fine. Just say engineer, no, we are complicating ourselves. So, promoting architecture was one of our first jobs when we finished. But now it's much more, they're all, you know, uh, everyone knows about this, but that time it was very difficult. Yeah. I think the student field still there's a problem. I think they also face uh, the similar problem now. No, I agree with you that, uh, you know, uh, currently, at least when you say that you're an architect or you're pursuing architecture, people at least have a clear idea, oh, this is what we're doing. Sometimes, uh, you know, they kind of, and I think this is something a lot of architects take offense at, uh, a lot of people um, confuse them with civil engineers. 
and they're like oh you're the same you designing so are they but how is your different so i think um until and unless they uh, whoever whoever you are introducing to don't take an interest on saying you know oh, i don't know uh, anything about your field but could you like highlight it and um how you present that uh, it is not just a field that use because it does use a lot of science it's not just saying you know you're just uh, designing you're just uh, making drawings it's like uh, you know you getting together or it's a coming together of um, scientific thinking engineering and also drawings and how to you know represent uh, your engineering skills in on paper on plans and effectively solving you know uh, design issues or however i think yeah there is in our syllabus we have uh, some courses like uh, 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 appreciating art and architecture <clears throat> when you see an image you know you don't you don't actually you know it look nice okay colorful and stuff but you, you start understanding what went to the image or the concept in the image then you will really appreciate the effort that has been taken uh, i i in architecture also most of the designs uh, we have the script you know like we said the thesis the student generally do a design for a period and that been evaluated uh, regularly and the students are asked to explain so only when they explain then we will know how much you know depth and detail that they've done it's like a movie or you know ar rahman music the teacher first time you you hear it's all good nice then every time you hear you hear one small music here and there some beat there then you start appreciating you know how much of layers of thought has gone into this work so uh, though uh, you know uh, design is one of the main thing that uh, architects do if they don't communicate it well then the whole thing you know will not be appreciated uh, i think that's one of the main thing that all the students and uh, you know the architects have to understand uh kirti ma'am do we have any other question ah okay i'm so sorry uh, sir i'm saying that uh, we have one in fact we have more than 10 questions but i don't know how much time we can devote to the question hour but then we can pick up uh, one pertinent question that a student has just expressed uh it says that as a young architect my biggest internal conflict has been between expressing my mind regarding design decisions and pleasing the client rightly so as they are investing the time and money and then uh, the student says that uh, it would be nice if it can be you know what to do in in, in this case that how to communicate the design that uh, somebody has in the mind and what would be the best way to express uh, as in the client should be you know Uh, well managed if we talk about the market ready skills so i think uh, this can be one of the major skills in the current scenario this question is from one uh, architect actually okay sir okay hi <laughs> so whatever the, the design they have in their mind how that design should click well with the client and what could be the best way to express the design because they can they are very creative people all architects are very creative and uh, they have a lot many ideas in their mind but then how to find out like uh, i know it's very tricky but then how to find out what to click well with the client's idea as well as uh, the demand it is something like more towards how to convince the client or something with the, with the, with the, their uh, idea hello this question is for diksh uh come madam right i i don't know i mean i did you could also answer just to you guys not to me yeah <laughs> okay i think uh, this is a, it's a very nice question this is a very very nice very important question that always comes to you know an architect who's uh, between about uh, four years five years practice you know uh, something so initially
initially there were, there were, there may, might have been some instances where uh, there are clients who just listen to you and then do that and then you feel that what you have been doing is right and then you keep going ahead and at the, there are at some point now suddenly you find you know, some client who is you know, cropping up as a little you know, intelligent guy and then coming and uh, you know, expressing the, the idea that he is the person who is going to uh, uh, invest the time money and uh, resources uh, Uh, like that, that you are the person who is actually uh, you are a person who is creating you are a creator but he is the person who is actually bringing the resource that idea he will uh, so so in, in your mind so there certainly this slight conflict start cropping up so then you know you start looking at you now what you have done and how it catered uh, and uh, in uh, certainly at that point of time you go in, uh, into a kind of a introspection and then see uh, the efficacy of what you have done uh, or has it been just you know accepted because you just gave a design and then the person did not understand what it is uh, i will uh, just uh, take you know one a quick example from one of my uh, first initial designs i created a created a space you know offset to the dining from uh, Yeah, a car parking space between which was dining which was sandwiched in between a car park and a kitchen and I offset that in the towards inside and then I created a small offset uh, which uh, had some pergola and uh, I started telling that it's a raised uh, lawn and things like that so initially it was looking and uh, the drawing it was looking very good when you built it was looking very good for quite some time also they were all using it and uh, after uh, some few years you now when i went to see that you know they have put some asbestos sheet and all that and covered and put that uh, kept it as a store room attached to the pergola and all you know, closed <laughs> with some some sheet and all they have made it as a nice uh, store room kind of a thing in between uh, near the thing. so then i i for a moment i thought after 15 years when i saw that this is what i designed this is how is it <laughs> or maybe the family's requirement changed evolved or some things like that so what you have to do is you have to just to say uh, this is the idea what i have because when we are an architect we are practice when you design for somebody you can also do some educate education actually you have to explain to them this is what the effect to any such which they will have a different kind of a experience their uh, built space so when they accept when you have to talk to them in such a manner how they they don't accept that only as an aesthetic element they also accept that as a real functional element so uh, that is how you have to try to convince them then uh, when you in your inner mind after 5 6 years of practice certainly your inner mind you will know you will be you will have the conviction you will certainly know this is going to work when uh, that 100% conviction is there you just go ahead and tell them sir you please build this certainly it will be a wonderful place and it will really work Uh, that that kind of a conviction now by practice by you know every time introspecting your whatever you did and uh, by observing what is happening you did something and similar to that something you saw somewhere else and really it's happening or not happening that way you keep uh, updating and correcting yourself uh, this will be possible so uh, times will be good you have to be a little patient and then at one point of time certainly you can start convincing you might not uh, convince also you might uh, you might at uh, maybe after the discussion you certainly may, may value his point of view and then give a slightly different solution it is also good you have to be a little open i hope uh, uh, i think uh, i i answered uh, uh, architect yalni's uh, query yes sir in fact uh, with your uh, experience and uh, your uh, you know sharing of uh, all the all the major ideas that how in design and architecture the majority of the question lies that whether the client is able to agree with your design or not so we have another uh, set of questions but uh, due to paucity of time uh, what we can do is we can mail the question to diksha ma'am and then she can uh, give a personal reply to each of the question uh, so with your uh, with your permission if we can please proceed with the vote of thanks Uh, because i think the zoom session will uh, end in a few minutes um no it's uh, no we should thank uh, first uh, kirti ma'am for organizing and uh, getting diksha ma'am into this uh, you know at chetar school of architecture because uh, we at chetar school of architecture though we are uh, having a lot of sessions uh, so mostly towards uh, you know the sessions are uh, mostly by architects and then uh, uh, the dean uh, mr lona the not the lona he was always saying we have to get different disciplines uh, into this one because architecture is not just one field 
we even don't call it college of architecture we call it school of architecture because just the basics that we uh, doing and then everything has to develop from this so he was always saying that we need to get a lot of uh, you know different disciplines involved uh, you know psychology uh, english and the communication and uh, mathematics and science and all these things has to you know everything art and you know everything actually from this one and uh, you know when we uh, when kirti ma'am proposed uh, this thing it was, we were all very happy and uh, uh thanks get them first for uh, you know getting uh, this uh, you know, webinar organized and i hope uh, we will continue more uh, sessions like this uh, in the future and i uh, request your support from this one diksha ma'am uh, it was really pleasant to have you and uh, uh, i know it's very early uh, no, it should be about 6:30 7:00 for you you uh, yeah i'm really, really sorry and uh, no thank you for uh, you know uh, being here with us uh if possible we would like to have uh, uh, more sessions uh, with you and uh, uh, we could uh, uh, streamline uh, uh, based on the requirement of the students also uh, and uh, since we have started uh, i'm getting a lot of messages now uh, because generally we have a session at 11 o'clock saturday 11 o'clock is a session uh, this time we shifted uh, to 6 uh, i mean uh, 10:30 uh, so now people are asking uh, no, we build up joined and so uh, no the lot of messages on my phone uh, we have this recording and it will be played on uh, uh, youtube and so uh, thank you so much for coming ma'am and uh, thank you uh, dean loan and sir for uh, you know uh, creating a you know environment in which we are all able to perform and uh, do things uh, webinar like this uh, thank you so much thank you all for participating thank you thank you sir thank you, thank you so much sir uh, we can lend the meeting thank you okay thank you